Today is Thursday. It's January 15th, 2015. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good Thursday morning. Thank you for being with us. Glad you're here. Yes, we are yes, glad we to are. have you on this beautiful day. Glad to be here. Mm -hmm. matter. Well, actually, glad to be anywhere for that matter, but uh, it is a Aren't Thursday. we all? Yes, we are. Today, the 15th. Uh, I, I want to mention something very quickly before I forget about it. You know okay. how I am. I'll forget about it. But uh, yesterday was... Um, Someone's birthday. LL Cool J. Oh, how yeah. old is LL Cool J? Oh, LL Cool J is 74. 70? Really? No. See, that's a different LL Cool J. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> LL is 47. Oh, that, that makes more yeah, sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. He's that's 47. the LL Cool J I'm aware of. That's right. Anyway, you know what the LL stands for? What? Ladies Love. Ladies Love Cool J. Cool James is his name. His name is James... I'm assuming he made all that up. Yeah, yeah, James Todd Smith. Well, Mama he, didn't name him that. No, Mama didn't name him Lady Love. No. He is, uh, he's a, of course, uh, an entertainer. He's a singer. He's right. a rapper. And uh, I was a rapper. Were you a rapper? Oh, I worked at Kmart. Yeah. <laughs> I, rap, I was a rapper, Christmas too. Time. Yeah, I rapped Christmas for the, for the um, rap Christmas presents for the Mayor's Youth Council. Did you? Okay. At Berkeley Mall. <laughs> Okay. Absolutely. All right, James Todd Smith, 47 yesterday. All right, well, I, and I've got more for you. I'll tell you who they are a little later on. Perfect, okay, perfect. Okay, okay. Let's see. Do you Don't forget, tomorrow is the Coffee House, which is an evening of songs, oh, yeah. Broadway past and present. Tomorrow night, put on by Center Stage Theater right there at Goldsboro Paramount. You can get tickets online, or you can go to their box office right there on Center Street. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. That's a great show, great program. For those of you 60 and older, the Wayne County Senior Center, that's the Peggy M. Seegers Senior Center. Yes. A part of the Wayne County Services on Aging. Uh, the hours, uh, 7.30 every morning, Monday through Friday. Every morning, Monday through Friday at 7.30. Saturday, they open at 10 o'clock. They're open every night till 8.30, except Wednesdays and Saturdays. Wednesday, they close down at 6. Saturdays, they close down at 2.30. Sundays, they're not open. But if you're 60 and above and you're new to the Wayne County area, you really should go to the Senior yes, Center. Yes, you You'll should. You'll be quite impressed with it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm impressed every time I go well, in. Well, they have such an array of activities from one end of the spectrum to the other that's mm -hmm. happening every day, every week. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. It's very interesting. And such a variety of activities. And if you are inclined to be on computer, if you are technologically inclined. Or would like to be. Or would like to be. <laughs> they have a computer room there that would just knock your socks off. And they have classes to and teach you how classes. to do various yes. things on the computer. Lots of classes there, lots of fun. Always something always something going on, uh, as is indicated by the parking lot. Yeah, yeah exactly. The parking lot's always exactly. full. There's always a bunch of people there having a good time doing stuff. Exercise, you wouldn't believe it. Guess what today is? Thursday. Yes. All right, what do I win? <laughs> it is the Community Blood Drive, city oh, versus today. county today. Yeah, well. That's right, it starts this morning at 10 o'clock, goes until 2.30. You can well. go to two different locations. I feel like a flight attendant. Two different <laughs> locations. You can go to George Street to the Red Cross building. Yeah, that's yeah. right, 600 North George. That's right, or you can go to Clingman Street to the maintenance complex for the city. That's right. I think it's 1600. 1601. Or 1601. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, pet adoption center is across the street. That's there, right. So that's 1600, so it would be 1601, maybe. So from 10 until 2.30, either one of these locations today, we'd love to have you join us. Come and give blood. Um, this is the time of year we've talked about several times that the blood is a little bit low. They, they, you know, they've used a lot through yeah. the holidays, unfortunately, for accidents and various emergency situations. And they are desperately in need and have asked us to really try to promote asking you as a community to come and give blood at either one of these locations today. That's right. And you can uh, actually uh, make an appointment. Uh, so make it easy for yourself there. Make an appointment. If you want to go to the county site at the, at the uh, Red Cross Center on North George Street, you can call 735-7201 to make an appointment, 919-735-7201. And what's the number for the city? The city is Cindy Stollard, the occupational health nurse, 919-580-4228, 580-4228. However, they will probably get there a little early today and be setting up, so they may not be answering their phones this morning. Oh, yeah. Because today well, is the day of the event. Today. okay. But yeah, you can just do a walk-in. Just till, be a walk-in. What is it? Till 2.30. Till 2.30. Till 30. Till 2 30. Mm -hmm. City versus county. I wanted to mention to you, not to change the subject or anything, but uh, the young lady who is the who receives folks at the city hall, 
I read the paper a few weeks ago, a few days Ms. ago. Miss Linda Braswell, Linda she Braswell just retired. She's retiring from the city. She has retired as of December 30th. She was a huge asset to the city of Goldsboro. No we question. love her. Right. Everybody that walked in those doors was greeted with a smile, an extremely helpful and friendly person True. for years and years. Yes. We will miss her greatly. Um, we can't say enough good things about Miss Linda. I She's know. fabulous. She's going to be missed. And Absolutely. I know every time I went in, into the city hall area that uh, she was just always pleasant. All, and she remembered names. Uh, uh, she always remembered she names. Remembered she certainly names. did. She's amazing. She's very good at her job. And, uh, and, and, and it's obvious to me she enjoyed her job. Oh, loved it. She loved it. She and, certainly uh, she did. She will be missed. And uh, there you go. Kudos to her. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. So are you going to put the mayor down there now? A mayor. Well, we'll have to see if Mayor King wants yeah, to sit down sure. there for a little while. <laughs> Greet all those there you go. <laughs> I believe it may be time to get our interviews. Okay. I guess today is Tyler Whaley, who is the field crop agent for the Wayne County Cooperative Extension Service. Hey, man. Good to be here. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. It doing is great. good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Anytime. Now, Tyler. We're not growing anything right now. I mean, it's the middle of winter, man. I mean, it is, uh, what, it is January and uh, and the temperatures are cold. Very cold. Very cold. <laughs> very cold. Yeah, last week, one day, it was, uh, what, 14, and then and then it's, it's warmed up a little bit, but it's That's still right. cold. So what are farmers doing this time of year? Really, this time of year, our farmers, uh, well, for extension, is in our meeting season, what we call in the winter months. That's where we invite university specialists to come uh, to Wayne County and share the research they've done um, mm -hmm. over the past couple years and give just some up-to-date good information to our growers uh, to help them make decisions this upcoming year. So it's a good time to interact with specialists. You know, we have our tobacco meetings, mm -hmm. our cotton meeting, peanut, and also grain meeting. So it's a good time. Um, to basically look back on the 2014 crop year and see how we maybe can do things better mm -hmm. or see some things that work for us we'll continue to do. So it's a good time to work with university specialists and just share research with everybody. Having uh, gone over this research and looked at the past year's uh, yields, uh, was anything surprising to you? Really, overall, if you look at Wayne County Agriculture, 2014 was a pretty good year mm -hmm. um, in terms of yields. We did have sun tobacco where the rainfall hurt us in different places. Um, tobacco is a crop, it's a dry weather crop. Yeah. It, it can't take too much rain, especially at one period of time. That definitely hurts yield and quality. But overall, our crops, from a yield standpoint, they did pretty good. Our soybean crop in particular, in my opinion, did good to excellent. Really? Um, and I contribute that, you know, obviously to our growers. They do a good job of managing that crop. And also our varieties, I think, have Im improved tremendously. The technology, seed technology. You're talking about the, um, uh, the soybeans? Yes, uh, oh, the soybeans. Okay. We've had... Uh, okay, now, okay. Go ahead. city boy here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought soybean was a soybeans. There are different varieties of There's soybeans? There's different varieties of soybeans. Um, <laughs> different soybeans have different traits. You know, some might be more resistant uh, to nematodes, for example, being able to tolerate that pest better. Okay. And some, some grow a little taller. Uh, the color of the bean is different, meaning some might, a lot of growers know beans is either gray or it's either a brown bean. Okay. They really don't have an impact on yield, uh, but there's different characteristics like that uh, that are different early maturing beans, you know, later maturing beans. So do different varieties of soybeans yield a better uh, income? R real, yes, they I pay think pay a little so. better, some of them do? I think so, yeah. but really we have, soybeans are based upon maturity groups. Like a group four bean, for example, is, is more of a full season bean, group fours and group five. So mm -hmm. they'll be planted, you know, May 10th, May 15th, month of May. Well, from where do we get the, the inks and the, the industrial uh, uses of soybeans? Does that come from any particular soybean, or, or is it, can all of it be eaten? Well, a <laughs> lot of <laughs> soybeans, it, it goes into our feed a little bit, but a lot of it, you know, soybean is an oil seed crop. So an we oil extract the oil, crop. the That's meal, uh, the crush, yeah. we, we utilize it that way. Okay. Uh, so It's just everyone who needs it at the moment. That's right. All right. That's right. 
That's right. Okay, that's interesting. Well, what about some of the other crops now? How are we doing with, uh, say, uh, did uh, we had a lot of rain? Did, how do we do with corn? Corn, we had a pretty good, pretty good year. But because we got rain when we needed. We it. got rain when we needed corn. Uh, utilizes a lot more water than other crops or yeah. needs it, right. you know, especially to fill out ear. Um, during the pollination time, especially when we see that change from what we call vegetative to reproductive growth, when it when it basically produces fruit, which is the the ear of corn, ear of corn. that's when we need rain. Um, and then we have a very narrow window for that. We have a very narrow window. The plan depends upon planting date. It can depend upon the hybrid. Usually, though. It's around that last week of June, you know, first of July is when we yeah. we need rain on the yeah. corn. Uh, so, but yeah, overall we had some some good yields with our corn crop. All right, now are we doing anything at all with sorghum? Sorghum has that dropped off. Sorghum has dropped off, okay. um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the price of sorghum. It follows the price of corn, um, and really in general the commodity prices are down. A lot, and there's a lot of factors that impact commodity prices. If you look at corn, really the impact is driven from the Midwest, what we call the bread basket. Yeah, the yeah, I states, yeah. Iowa, Illinois, all of those states produce they a lot of corn. They pretty much set the price. Then. They pretty much set the price, and this past year they had an outstanding yield. Oh, okay. Uh, so you see a lot of supply come on the market. You mm. know, obviously you're going to see price go down to some right. degree. But going back to sorghum, it has fell off this past year. Um, but sorghum, I think, it still has a fit, especially in Wayne County on our marginal land, sandier soils, yeah, lighter texture soils. Still a place soils. for it. We There's, can do well with it. Here. We can do well with it, but it's like any other crop. You just can't go plant it and harvest it. I mean, you got to manage it mm. like every other crop. But it does have its advantages. You know, it's a good rotational crop. Um, in places where corn don't do as well. Um, it's good that we can rotate our chemistries, our, our herbicides, the chemicals we use to yeah. control weeds, right. essentially. Uh, we can rotate them. It works good in the soybean rotation. Um, so there's a lot of, it's a good alternative crop, you know, to Wayne County agriculture. And, so. and I didn't know about sorghum until a couple of years ago and started really picking up here in Wayne County. It really started picking up, you know, Murphy it's a Brown. Feed. It's, a, it's a livestock feed. Livestock feed. feed. Now, how does it affect our livestock production here in Wayne they County? They want it. They want yeah. sorghum because it's locally yeah. grown grain. You can get it quickly. You know, if you go from the Midwest, you got to pay the transportation costs. Yeah. And that can be pretty significant. So they want all the grain they can get right here in eastern North Carolina. So there's still a market for it. There's here. still a market for it. Well, that's good news. Yeah. It's just not as big as it was. That's so right. The, well, the acreage is down oh, okay. compared to, say, 2012 and, and 2013. And last year I went out onto the uh, Dudley Mount Olive area and talked to a gentleman out there who was growing rapeseed. Right. Uh, do, are we going to? And it was a, the most beautiful yellow color yep. you have ever yep. seen. Now, and and I went out and talked to him about it, and he explained to me how it's grown and uh, and how it's used. Right. It's a very important product. A lot of people don't realize it, uh, or even have never heard of rapeseed. Yeah, it is. And, and you're talking about William Jackson, and he exactly. does, a good, he does yeah. a good job with that. And it's a very interesting crop. And like you say, if you're going down 117, a lot of people ask, well, what is that growing out there in the field? You know, yeah. it's rapeseed. He, and, and they never <laughs> heard of that, really. He told me there was a fellow flying across North Carolina that looked over Mount Olive and saw that big yellow yeah. he actually landed yeah. his plane <laughs> yeah. to find out what it was. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's it's, that, it's that beautiful. Yeah. And that just goes to show, um, looking at rate seed, the, diverse, the diversity of agriculture we have in Wayne County, yes. specifically with the field crops. Yeah, right. I'm not sure the people, and we've talked about this, people don't realize how important Wayne County is in agriculture nationally and internationally. It has a tremendous impact. Tremendous impact across mm -hmm. the entire country. That's right. That's We're right. good. Man, I'm t we are good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so move, and I'll be, I, I want to get down and, uh, and talk to William Jackson again, but do you see uh, uh, rapeseed continuing as a, as a viable product here in Wayne County? I think it has a fit. Um, it's really, it takes the place of our wheat crop. Mm -hmm. I think with rapeseed you can harvest it a little earlier than uh -huh. you can with winter wheat. So that gives you um, an earlier planting date with soybeans. Uh, 
Right. And so, so when, that, the, when the rape seed's done, you put in soybean. That's right. You got that's it. Right. Rotation. So that's good. But it's yeah. really, it's, it's an alternative to our wheat crop. Okay. Well, has wheat fallen? Is. Wheat has fallen some, too. Um, really, the commodity price in general, like I mentioned earlier, has. Um, but looking at this year, I thought the wheat acres would be down a little bit. I don't know exactly the numbers, but there's still a significant amount of wheat planted okay. in Wayne County. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, it, it has fallen some. All right, well, let's get back to my original question, and that is what are farmers doing right now? Because I see some with equipment out in the fields, they're cleaning their yeah. fields off, they're getting ready. What's yeah. going on besides the meeting? Well, yeah, like you say, we mentioned, we mentioned the meetings, but also they're doing maintenance work. Uh, you know, okay. they're p repairing their equipment yeah. um, in the shop. It's a good time of year to do that. Mm -hmm. Things are slow in the field. Um, like you say, they're, they're cleaning their ditches. Um, they're just really preparing uh, for the 2015 crop year that we're about to enter in. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's coming up is is going to be the Vaca greenhouse is going to be sowed. Oh, you yeah. know, first two weeks of February, I guess, is a good date, depending upon, um, you know, what's going on and, and how many acres you got. But usually it's around February 10th, 15th on average. So they're going to be doing maintenance on their greenhouse, you right. know, checking their heaters, uh, you know, putting new plastic down if they need to, mm -hmm. uh, removing any weeds or debris uh, from around the greenhouse. We encourage them to take water samples um, so they'll know exactly what they got when they start um, seeding their greenhouses yeah. in terms of nutrients uh, and, and that sort of thing in their water supply. All right, and I want to stop <coughs> here and ask you how would a farmer get that information okay what it's it's real simple to do i'm um, a simple guy <laughs> <laughs> i'll uh, understand I am too. <laughs> and uh, basically the ncda agronomic division performs that test and the only thing you need is an old drink bottle a 20 ounce drink bottle just make sure you rinse it out mm -hmm. two or three times cut your water supply on let it run for a minute or two and then just give me you know, a full bottle of water mm -hmm. it costs five dollars, mm -hmm. and you'll get a full report. And they bring it to you. They bring and it you to take me, care of it. and I take care of everything. Man, that's easy. And then we'll, once we get the reports, we'll sit down, um, review what they got, and then we can go ahead and plan on the greenhouses. All right. I want to talk about this chart behind us here for just a second here. But first okay. of all. Uh, that would be the water samples. Uh, That's right. Now we had a tremendous amount of rain last year, and I didn't realize we had had so much rain. I knew we had a lot. Yeah, we had a lot. But uh, before we get to that, do uh, what do uh, what do farmers do? Are farmers taking soil samples right now? Or it's a little late for that, isn't it? Well, no, they are, but it's just wet. They're just unable they to do so. They can't get in there. Yeah. yeah. If you if you take a wet or a moist water sample that can, you know, kind of skew the information mm -hmm. you get back in terms of information needed yeah. that's uh, within that soil sample. So yeah. it needs to be, um, I wouldn't say dry, but it doesn't need to have as much moisture as it's got now. Plus, it'd be a lot more expensive to mail it if it's wet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, think about it. You send water away, so water yeah. away, yeah. say eight yeah. pounds a gallon. Yeah, you know? that's true. Gee whiz. Yeah, right. that's right. All right, Tyler Whaley of the Cooperative Extension Service. He is the field crop agent. And we're talking about stuff, just anything just that comes. Just anything from, yeah, you right. want to talk so about. So let's talk about the rain that the farmers had to deal with last year. We need the rain to grow the crops. That's right. We didn't need quite as much as we had last year. That's, Although we're not complaining. That's right. Well, if you look at agriculture, really weather in general, especially rainfall, temperatures, mm -hmm. you know, we can do everything right in terms of pick the right variety, you know, apply the correct amount of fertilizer, use the correct pesticides. <laughs> But if the weather doesn't cooperate with us, there really ain't much we can do. Nothing you can do about you know, it. So it's very important. So what I did was um, I took eight different locations throughout the county and uh -huh. had them, tried to get them staggered out and get a good representation of what we had. Right. And really, this is a, is for the 2014 years, an annual uh, report. Let's take a look at, uh, we'll throw it up on the screen there. And so, uh, what do we see here? Okay, so you can see on the y axis on the left side, you know, I have rainfall 
uh, measured in inches. And uh -huh. then across the bottom on the x-axis, I have the different locations in the growers that kept the rainfall. From right here in Wayne County? For right here in Wayne County. You can see I got some Smith Chapel, Pate Town, Princeton, Fremont, Seven Springs. Just I tried to get a good representation and get good general area of the county. So you can see the totals are mapped out um, on the graph and we have anywhere you know as high as 63.5 inches of rain Good that's gracious. for the whole year um, in Princeton you know you look at Pikeville 62 and but then Smith Chapel we didn't get quite as much rain you know in May and June so and so they're 52. How far is Smith Chapel from Princeton? Smith Chapel is in the southwestern part of the county whereas Princeton is right on the might as well say the Johnston County line. Right. Uh, so they're, they're not that far they're apart. They're not really that far apart. To have that difference, that much difference in that's rainfall. That's right. And you can go really <laughs> two or three miles and, and get a difference in rainfall. That's true. Um, but this is really just it tells an annual um, the annual amount of rainfall we got this year. And I went back and looked um, I tried to find a good Wayne County average we had, uh -huh. and I found it from 1903. This is that 1900, a long right. ways. Up That's to, over 100 years. Up to 2002 or three, I think right. it was. And that average was 49, I think, 0.3 inches. Per uh, year? Per year. 49.3 inches of rain per year. That's Let's right. Put that back up there. We and get 49 inches of rain a year. On average over that period of time. For 111 years, we averaged that much. That's some right. years were more, some were less. That's right. But this past year, 2014, we got a we got way over that. And I think That's almost our, in some places 50 percent more. And I think our average this year is, if you take all eight locations and take the average of that, I think we're right around 59, close to 60 inches of rainfall. So we're really you know, 10 to 12 inches above rainfall. Some spots might be a little more than that. I just don't have the data. That's, wow, that's, amazing. Um, that's an amazing number there. So, and also, I don't have this on the screen, but another, another uh, piece of information I got is really I averaged the eight locations we had mm -hmm. by month mm -hmm. and, and basically tried to map out uh, the, the change over the course of time over the year. Yeah. So really, if you look back in January, just the month of January, we averaged over, across those eight locations three inches of rain. In January. In January. But Which if, is slightly below average. But if you go on to September, we averaged nine. Nine inches, inches of rain. Nine inches of rain in September. So you look at September, nine inches. July was 7.8. That period of time there was when we had the most rainfall. So if you average everything out, we get 49 inches of rain a year. That's just barely over four inches a month on average. That's right. So January was a little low, February was a little low, low two and a half inches. That's right. And then you can look on the scale. Um, it really started to climb. If you look in April, we have 5.6, May 3.8. And then it was really, you might as well say on the September, a, a really linear relationship yeah. really on up to nine inches and then you can see December's been relatively wet yeah you know our average is 5.3 5.3 for, for this past December for this past December this past, just uh, a few weeks ago yeah that's right that's five right. inches of rain when we so, and that's well above average that is that is but but really this all started back in the during the 2013 season where we had so much rain and and I guess it started middle of June you know, till now, I guess yeah. you can say. And continues. Yeah. Who knows when it will end? Yeah. But we had a lot of rain in July, and, and really we wanted to see. We hadn't had that much rain in a long time because yeah. we'd had drought years in 10, 11. You know, 12 was a pretty good year. 12 really. was good, but 10 and 11 were really were dry. dry. The and whole year. The whole year, that's right. And that impacted our crops. But we really wanted to see um, what was happening in 2013. But I, I started with, I just put 2014 together because I had a whole year mm -hmm. of data. Mm -hmm. And really it's interesting, it's a good conversation piece it to is. talk about. You know, if you go to a country store somewhere, the first thing somebody's going to ask you, well, how much rain did you get? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, I got seven tenths yeah. last night. Well, then 
uh, you know, Farmer Bob over there is going to say, well, I got an inch and a half yeah. in my house. You know, this it's just good conversation, it good conversation. And, and, and it has a, a huge impact, you know, on agriculture. So we've had all this rain, uh, 60 plus inches over the past year. How is, is this going to affect the coming year? This well, next it, growing season. <clears throat> it's kind of too early to tell. Really, the one thing we got now is our wheat crop is planted. Mm -hmm. You know, the wheat that got planted on time, and when I say on time, you know, last week of October on up to the 15th of November looks pretty good. But then, as you can see by the chart, once you entered into December, mm -hmm. we started getting rainfall. So that put us behind in terms of planting. Yeah. Um, we weren't able to produce as much tillers as we wanted to. Tillers essentially make grain, yeah. which grain makes yield. Um, so we didn't really get the tiller counts that we wanted on our later planted wheat. Uh, so that'll have an effect. Um, and, and all of that stemmed from the rainfall. We just couldn't get in the field in a timely manner. You know, it will rain one day <clears throat> and then you'll lay out three and maybe pick another day and then it'll rain, rain again. again. <laughs> so, you know, it's just been kind of an uphill battle in yeah. terms of planting wheat in places and also, you know, finishing out this harvest season. All right. Well, you know, Tyler, I could probably go on for another hour or two. We could but probably talk all day about this. We probably could, <laughs> but, you know, a lot of time we'll just have to save some for the next time. That's How's right. That? That's all right. right. Tyler Whaley is the field crop agent for the Wayne County Cooperative Extension Service, and you can be reached at 731-1520. That'll work. Any of those numbers, 73, okay, 919-731-1520 or, or 1 or 2 or 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 7, I'm sure. Really? Yeah. All I right. don't know about 8, but I know uh, 7. We know 7 works. All <laughs> yeah. right, 731-1520, 21, 22, 23, et cetera. That's all right. right. That's right. And you're, are you... You're at Tyler.Whaley. At WayneGov.com. At WayneGov.com. Tyler.Whaley. Right. So if you want to contact this young man, do so. He's very sharp, and uh, right. we're proud to have you with us, sir. Good to be here. Thank you very Thank much, you, Ed, Tyler. All right, we're back. This is the second half of the same day. Yes, yeah, still January 15th. Uh, it's still 2015, though, right? Absolutely. Okay, good. Yes, I'm just it checking is. about yes, that. Yes, it is. At the Senior Center today, the 15th, we got bingo, we got your bridge group, we got your pinaco, the senior functional fitness testing, and all that going on today, including the Golden Grooves dance class at uh, tonight's six. You gonna join them? Uh, well, you know, I groove, but I'm gonna be <laughs> tied up tonight. You know? I hear you. Yeah, okay. I hear you. And then tomorrow, learning exercise equipment. This is the uh, the 16th now, uh, the 2020-20 chair exercise. Isn't that... Uh, My mom does that. Does she really? Remember, we talked about it. She does that. It's where you, you do exercises sitting in a chair. Yeah. But they're very strenuous. I mean, they're not they're not for the week, so mom tells me. Not for the week. Not for the week. <laughs> oh, not for the week, W-E-A-K. Yeah, not for week. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I misunderstood. You can do them all week if you so you choose. You can do them all week if yes. you so choose. <laughs> yes. Uh, the movie Pearl Harbor will mm -hmm. be shown at 2 o'clock at the uh, Senior Center. They show a movie every Friday. Yeah, we talked about that, that the, both the, mm -hmm. at Goldsboro Parks and Recreation yeah. at Herman Park right. at 1130 every Friday they show a movie. And then at wh what time at the Senior this Center? This one is at 2 o'clock. Okay, so 1130 or 2. Yeah, and Pearl Harbor is a fairly recent movie. Yeah, it's pretty and long. It, it's long and it won a lot of awards. Mm -hmm. Uh, something also for those who are technologically inclined, that is to say if you like computers, there's going to be a Facebook clinic beginning at 4 p.m. for seniors at the Senior Center. Well, I think that's Facebook. neat. Yeah, I think yeah. it's neat that they're teaching folks that are interested and want to get on the Internet, yeah. want to know how to use it a little more and become a little more yeah. familiar, how to be able to reach out to family members yeah. or, or friends they haven't seen or talked to in a while. Oh, yeah. It can be a great tool. My mother, rest her soul, mm -hmm. when she was 79 years old, she bought a computer and started learning. And well, I couldn't get her away from it. Well, she, there you oh, go. Oh, she loved it. She absolutely loved it. That's, that's great. Yeah. All right. Well, see. don't forget this weekend is the Coffee House, is which that is the, that's this weekend. That's okay. tomorrow, actually, okay, okay. which is put on by Center Stage Theater. It's an evening of songs from Broadway, past and present. Mm -hmm. And then next weekend is James Gregory and then the Black Violin. The funniest man in America. Yes, so he says. At 3 o'clock. We'll on see. Sunday. That's right. right. That's exactly and the right. Black violin. And then January 24th. Saturday night, 7 o'clock p.m., Miss Goldsboro Whoa. Scholarship Pageant Competition will be held at the Paramount. I cannot believe it's already time for that. I know, and once she's crowned, we'll bring her back in and find out what her plans are for the year and how she plans to represent our, our community. 
little more about her. You talking about Miss Goldsboro? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Well, well, what's going to happen to Beth Stovall? Well, Beth Stovall's Miss North Carolina. I, yes. Oh, we're so, talking about Miss Goldsboro. We're, we're talking about Miss Goldsboro. Yeah, I'm, I see. I'm, I'm catching up I know up she here. was Miss Goldsboro. I'm still talking about thinking about the <laughs> senior center here. Well. If that tells you anything. <laughs> well, somebody yeah. might need to go sit in those chairs and yeah, lift some okay. weights. <laughs> All right, stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, the 15th. Harry Truman became the first U.S. president on this day, 1953 it was, to use radio and television to say goodbye, America, as he left his uh, left office as president. He was my president. Was he? When I was born, yeah. When Actually, it was Abe Lincoln, but I don't talk about that. Well, let's don't. Harry Truman. All right, Super Bowl number one held on this day, 1967. Tickets were 10 bucks. 1961, 19, first Super Bowl. I'm sorry, 1967, the first Super Bowl. Yeah, it was the Packers and the Chiefs going at it, and the Packers won 35 to 10 over the Chiefs. I remember it well. <laughs> Not really. Ten dollars a ticket. <laughs> and wonder how much tickets are these days. Oh, several thousand. Anyway, uh, Margaret O'Brien, child actor, child star, grew up. She's still with us, uh, 78 today. Also a birthday today for Mario Van Peebles. A lot of people know him. He's 58 today, a very talented actor. Chad Lowe, the actor, yep. is 47. And Regina King. Regina King, oh, Jerry Maguire, Hal Stellar got her groove back, Enemy okay. of the State, Mighty Joe Young, and a bunch of other stuff. She's 44 today. Well, happy Woo. birthday. You it's go. your happy special happy. day. All right. Don't forget, you have until 2.30 today to give blood at either the Red Cross building on George Street or either at the city's complex, uh, or maintenance complex on Clingman Street. Yes, that's From common. 10 until 2.30. 10 until 2.30 today, and the, and the, and the county's going to win this one, too. Uh, probably not. I think we will. Probably not. City versus county, we'll see who takes the today, title. Today, today, today <laughs> is our day. The county's going to get it. You can keep hoping. We'll allow that. We'll allow that. I believe it's time to go for today. Okay, that is okay. all, Mr. Alley. Right, so we're going to stop here, take time out, and go give blood. Have yourself a great day. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back Friday right here at this time. Hope you're with us here at this time because this is the time we're here. Until then, I'm Wayne Alley. <laughs> and I'm Kim Best, and this is what's happening in your community.